When they drafted Tyler Kolick, the New York Knicks had a master plan in the works for their point guard situation. And also, Joel Embiid has spoken out on New York Knicks fans, and we have to talk about all this. So what's up, guys? Welcome back to Knicks Digest. It's Chris here. And we're going to jump right into the video, as we always do. Because first things first... The New York Knicks point guard plan has been revealed, and I know this sounds insane with Jalen Brunson on the team and as the franchise player, but when the New York Knicks drafted Tyler Kolick, there was something in mind that's more than just getting a guy who could develop into Jalen Brunson's backup point guard. It was a move to essentially find the most similar player that they could possibly find to Jalen Brunson and hoping that he could develop into a similar type of player. Now, I'm not saying he's going to be some MVP candidate. That is basically next to impossible of happening. But what it is doing is the New York Knicks are trying to find a point guard that can emulate Jalen Brunson's game completely. So when Brunson's off the court, they can still have an engine like him to go. And that is where Tyler Kolick comes in. And let me just show you guys why that is. Now, Tyler Kolick recently was talking about comparisons and said, Brunson's game, I feel like that's a little closer to what I play like than TJ McConnell. I play at my own pace, getting in the paint, getting guys involved. I can learn from him in the mid-range. In that short area where I'm coming off ball screens or isolations, I'm just really excited to learn from him and watch him and take as much as I can. And now this continues, as Kolick mentioned. It's just playing under control, picking angles, getting to the line. That's a really big thing. Brunson does a great job at getting to the line. I really got to learn that. In the NBA, it's so different. You can over-exaggerate things. Just little tricks of the trade that you could pick up from older guys. Now, somewhere Sean Bernard of Sixers Digest is smiling, watching me mention that Jalen Brunson's very good at getting to the free throw line. But Jalen Brunson is very good at getting to the free throw line. Not as much as Joel Embiid is. But Jalen Brunson is very good at getting to the to the free throw line in the NBA. And that's something Tyler Kolick wants to learn from him. And Kolick mentioned something that's absolutely correct. One of the best talents that Jalen Brunson has is the way that he works his angles. It's absolutely phenomenal to see. The man is just perfectly placing himself all the time. That comes with basketball IQ, just being sharp on the move, knowing where you have to be. It's really IQ-based more than anything else. Jalen Brunson nor Tyler Kolick, neither of them are going to outrun anyone. They're not going to be more athletic. They're doing it based off skill and mentals. Now, that is why Tyler Kolick, that's one of the reasons why I think Tyler Kolick can become as good as Jalen Brunson, can become a good version of what Jalen Brunson is. I was getting ahead of myself there. I don't think Tyler Kolick can become as good as Jalen Brunson. So, I, that's why I had to cut myself off right there. But look, I think he'd become a Jalen Brunson light type player where he can be an NBA sixth man for a while. He could be the Knicks sixth man for a long time and he can give the Knicks that other version of Jalen Brunson when Brunson's on the bench, someone who can emulate his game and create looks for other people and himself while Brunson's off the court. We know the Knicks needed more shot creation, whether it's someone setting people up or creating their own ability to score. It really lives and dies with Jalen Brunson and Julius Randle. I mean, DiVincenzo can certainly do it, and having him as the team's sixth man is going to make them a lot better. And Mikael Bridges is good at it as a third option. So they do have more shot creation than they did before, and that partially comes with Tyler Kolick because now he gets to learn from Bronson. He gets to be this guy who could just do what Bronson does. He can learn from Jalen Brunson, and he could seamlessly eventually transition into being a Knicks sixth-man guy, being the backup point guard for the Knicks for a long, long time. Teams are going to notice that he's similar to Jalen Brunson, and if it will come down to it, he'll eventually potentially become a trade asset with teams thinking, okay, maybe he can have that Brunson-esque explosion that Brunson did once he got to the Knicks and got that opportunity. Now, I don't know if that's going to happen, but, you know, it's something to definitely look at. Now, also, let's take a look at something else real quick. Fred Katz mentioned that Brunson is one of one, and there won't be a second because the way he just climbed into the NBA's elite is something that Kolick should note and not leave Brunson's side because of. He mentions that imitation is the world's greatest compliment and that Kolick should spend the years ahead 
of stealing from the point guard who plays in front of him, which obviously is Brunson. So he's going to get a chance to really do that, which is going to really, really help his game. And Brunson will be the only point guard in front of him. As Ian Begley mentioned, he thought Cameron Payne would get significant minutes next season because the fact that the Knicks were very much interested in Tyus Jones also, who would have received minutes. However, that's not exactly the case. The Knicks are thrilled to get Payne for the veterans minimum, but at the moment, he's thought to be the third lead guard behind Tyler Kolick, and that makes you think, okay, the Knicks really see Tyler Kolick as a second Jalen Brunson. And obviously, again, not as good, despite what I almost said earlier. But um, they see him as a guy who could play similarly to Jalen Brunson. We know that Tibbs likes his backups to imitate his starters. And that's what Kolick does. So I think this is just another reason why that was an excellent draft pick. But also, guys, there is more to talk about. And that is the fact that Joel Embiid is in the Olympics. And now Sean Bernard is no longer smiling because he's not playing very well. Embiid, that is. I don't think Sean's playing in the Olympics. But um, look, here's the deal. Embiid has spoken out on the Knicks due to the hate he's gotten at the Olympics. Now, Embiid has basically been asked a lot about his Olympics and the difference it is. And he's talked about how he likes that. He can kind of just play, and he doesn't have to be the focal point, and it's nice. But we all know Joel Embiid is having a rough Olympics right now. He's just not playing very well, and that happens. Sometimes people just, you don't play great. I don't think Embiid's fully healthy. I don't think it was a good idea for him to play in the Olympics at all. He just played a long season dealing with a knee injury, dealing with Bell's palsy. Hopefully that's all That's all good now. You, I'm never going to root for someone to be injured, especially Embiid, who you know at the end of the day is a good person. There's no need for that, as much as there's a rivalry or not. Joel Embiid did speak out on the Knicks, and you got to get two different thoughts when you take a look at this. Embiid said, I don't think it should be anything, but if it's more than that, I embrace it. I don't think you can get worse than playing in New York in the playoffs, and that's on him being booed at the Olympics by France. Now, Embiid is from Cameroon. He speaks French fluently, so he's got a connection to France. But clearly, they're not the biggest fans of him. And now Embiid also has talked at the Knicks before, saying that New York's not hostile and that he loves it. It's his favorite city in the world and that he just loves New York. If he's got to be a punching bag and you hear a lot of F Embiid, that's okay. He loves it. Embiid respects the way that Knicks fans do things. He respects New York Knicks fans in general. And it's a very interesting take to see from a guy who's gotten a lot of hate both in the Olympics and in the one playoff series he was in this year. At the same time, he's throwing a lot of respect to New York. Like, that wasn't hate. It seems like it might be a little bit like, well, you know New York, they're going to scream at you, but I love it. Like, it's not like how Trey Young was kind of going out there, and though he embraced being a villain so well, similarly to Joel Embiid. Like, there's so much talk about, like, oh, well, is it right to say F Trey Young constantly. Like Mike Breen even brought it up when that was happening. As like, oh, well, I don't think this is right. And Clyde was very quiet because Clyde played in the 70s. And I think you guys can imagine some of the things that Clyde Frazier was probably called by a bunch of different people, depending on where he was in the country, if you get my drift. Um, so obviously that's why Clyde wasn't responding because he vehemently probably disagreed with Mike Breen because Clyde was in the NBA. He knows how it goes. Embiid seemingly likes it. It is very interesting to see. Part of me was put on my tinfoil hat and be like, well, does Embiid want to come to the Knicks? But the Knicks don't have assets for him. And also, he likes Philly. Philly's, they had an awesome offseason. He's going to play there. It'll be cool to watch them play. It'll be cool to see the rivalry with these teams both having improved. Obviously, Paul George will either get hurt or just play terrible basketball in the playoffs. It'll be one of the, one of the two. Joel Embiid, tough to imagine he stays healthy after the Olympics. Basically, two straight years of playing basketball. I feel like it's going to get to him. I just don't think the 76ers are going to do very well in the playoffs because of that. I think injuries are going to bite them. And I think Paul George is just not very good, like in comparison to that contract he got. So yeah, on that front, sorry, Joel, you gave us a lot of respect and I just didn't return the favor, but Joel Embiid's a phenomenal player. It is very interesting to see if he gets mad if he gets fed up with the 76ers and requests a trade, I wonder if you would specifically name drop the Knicks. He wouldn't go there because they just wouldn't trade him in the same division or the same conference. They'd trade him beat out West. But um, 
it is interesting to note that NBA players, at least some of them, and arguably the best one on the planet, respects the hell out of Knicks fans despite being the villain. And I figured it'd be fun to talk about. So, guys, I want to know what you guys think about this. Do you think that Embiid's right to kind of pay his respects to the Knicks, especially after losing, too? I feel like that's part of it. Like, he can't really troll. He knows that the Knicks got the better of the 76ers in that series. So, he's not really going to go out and troll, even though he was doing the to kind of mock Jalen Brunson, and Brunson did it back to him. It's curious. But, guys, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Let me know what you think about the Colick stuff down below. Should he be the backup point guard this season? Should they throw him right into the fire? In case you're wondering about Deuce, he's going to play the two more often. He's going to be a shooting guard. They like him better at that position anyway. Kind of like an Avery Bradley type thing going on there. So, that's why Deuce McBride is not technically their backup point guard, though. He'll be in the rotation more than Colick will be. And I'm interested if it makes it a 10-man rotation. So, guys, let me know all your thoughts down below. Like this video, subscribe, turn on post notifications. Y'all know the drill. Have a great day, and go Knicks.